All right, so welcome back. This is uh, Andrew Klein again, and this is video 14 of my uh, compositing a shot video series. Uh, we're now in After Effects, and what we're doing is we're going to try and start some of our layering, uh, bringing some things together and controlling some effects. Uh, I've started out with my master layer in a composition. Uh, this is my master composition. Uh, I'm actually going to rename this composition uh, background only because this is just going to be my background elements. And I'm going to put my foreground elements on top of this in a nested composition. So here's my background. Uh, here's my master image. Uh, what I want to do right now is since I rendered this out as 32-bit, I have the ability to control its exposure without really destroying the image. Uh, I'm going to do this by going to Effect, Color Correction, and then choosing Exposure. Now what I can do here is I can alter my gamma correction and you see I have this like really wide range of ability without destroying my image to change my contrast. Here's my exposure and I can sort of just pick the contrast point that I want uh, and I'm pretty happy with what I've got right here. Um, looking at it though and again I've got this on sort of uh, quarter resolution. I'm going to switch this to full resolution so it's a little bit more visible. Uh, looking at this though I'm kind of a bit unhappy with some of the saturation of this. So uh, on my master layer, I'm going to go to Effect, Color Correction, and choose Color Balance. Now here I have individual sliders for my shadows, my midtones, and my highlights for the red, green, and blue channels. And oftentimes I find myself just editing these uh, till I get values that I like. Blue shadows down, up, uh, highlight blue, up, down. I can make the shot warmer or cooler depending on what I'm looking for. And uh, I'm not spending a whole bunch of time like really artistically tweaking this too far right now um, just because I'm trying to show the uh, the different sort of changes that I have here. If you don't like what you've got, you can always hit reset on the top of color balance and then uh, you know just make some sort of like minor changes. I'm going to go to about right here. I think that looks pretty good. And, you know, that's my master. And you can spend a whole bunch of time continually color balancing this till you really get the effects that you want. But uh, I'm going to move on right now for time's sake. Uh, sometimes what I might do as well uh, with my uh, effects is uh, I may also come in and uh, in addition to the exposure and in addition to the uh, color balance that I have, uh, I will sometimes come in and maybe tint the image. Uh, this can be used if you just want to do desaturating, but uh, this can kind of control overall saturation of the image, and if you want to get a little bit of desaturation, I can do that here. I can also map whites to an alternate color. So for instance, with tint, I can map my whites to be like red, for instance, and that can be like a really intense toning of the image. Uh, or I can map my whites to a blue and, and make my image less saturated. So this can be a really good way to just kind of control overall color tinting. Uh, I'm not necessarily going to use this here, so I'll delete off that layer effect. So here's my master layer. Let's start stacking some layers on top of this. I'm working with the background right now. Uh, let's go ahead and throw on top my specular. So here's just my specular highlights. I, I put this layer down on top here, just my specular highlights. Uh, since the back of my image is completely black, what I want to do is I want to add these highlights on top. Uh, the general rule of thumb is that if your image is mostly black, you uh, set it as an additive blend mode. And if it's mostly white, you set it as a multiply blend mode. So with this specular image, I'm going to right click in my composition and I'm going to go to blend mode and choose add. Now you can see here if I turn this layer on and off, here's the addition of that extra little uh, specularity. So here's it off, here it is on. It's very minimal. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my spec layer and I'm actually going to do a couple things here. First, I'm going to go to color correction and I'm going to adjust the exposure of this, which I can use to kind of blow out the highlights a bit. So now I've really like punched up those highlights. These are all the specular shininess highlights. I might also actually use a tint in this case. This is effect, color correction, tint. And I can remap my white maybe to like a really warm tone. 
might give me an interesting highlight color here. And if you look at the difference with tint on and off, it might give you like a really subtle like yellowing on top of this, which is kind of cool. Now, one more thing I like doing with my specular pass, which I think can be kind of cool. I'm just going to zoom in here so you can see this a bit. Is I like to apply a Gaussian blur to this. Uh, I'm going to go to uh, Effect, Blur, and Sharpen and choose Gaussian Blur. And I'm just going to up the blur amount. Now, at a blur of zero, this highlight is pretty sharp. But if I up it just a bit, this is a blurriness value of about 4.3, I'm blurring just the highlight. You can see here's what it looks like just by itself. Here's uh, Gaussian Blur off. Here's Gaussian Blur on. I put it with the background image. I get this sort of little glowy ethereal highlight around my elements. And uh, I, you know, I really like this look. I think it's something that can benefit your images uh, quite frequently. I'm going to take my uh, reflections uh, pass now. This is my background reflections pass. I'm going to pop this on. Again, it's mostly black, so uh, I'm going to take my uh, blend mode and set it to add. Uh, now I've got a separate layer, which just kind of is my reflections. And I'm putting this on top of my already existing reflections, doubling this down. But uh, oftentimes I like to edit this a bit. For instance, uh, I'll go to color correction and maybe choose tint here. Maybe I can make these reflections all pretty blue. Uh, now I've got sort of a much bluer look to that. I could also take this and go to effects color correction and get my color balance. These are the filters I use uh, most predominantly. Uh, I can up the amount of uh, shadow blue and highlight blue. And this can all be done to effect until you got the look that you need. So here you can see the big dramatic difference I'm getting by sort of recoloring just those reflective elements. Uh, what else do we have? We have our indirect pass. This is mostly black. This is just the bounced illumination. Uh, what I'm going to do here is again I'm going to set this blend mode to add which adds additional light to my shot. Uh, I also um, probably think that this is a bit too intense. So I'm going to open up the indirect by clicking on the little triangle in my layers. And then I'll open up the transform and I can modulate the opacity by sliding this up and down until I have the amount that I want. I might set this pretty low at like 40 something percent. But again, I can also um, tint this, color correction, tint. And let's make this like a really orange or so. Let's see what it does. Subtle, but it's like a warming filter for the surface. So I kind of like where that's going. Uh, those are my tints. And I've now got my background pretty much composited. Um, I have this direct pass as well. Uh, sometimes I take the direct pass and actually will multiply it. I set the blend mode to multiply. Uh, this can create an interesting look, but sometimes it's a bit too crinkly and too sharp when you apply it this way. But if I do set the opacity pretty low on this, and then sometimes give this a little bit of Gaussian blur, you can get some pretty interesting effects by adding that uh, direct illumination pass on. It could also be used as a mask for setting lights for your shots, depending on the way you intend it to work. Well, I've got this uh, background only pass right now. Uh, I'm going to make a new composition. And uh, you'll notice that if I select like my occlusion pass, my occlusion pass is uh, 21 seconds and 21 frames long. So that's its time code base. Uh, I'm going to make a new composition by going to Composition, New Composition. Uh, I'm going to call this one Foreground. Uh, since I have the background already existing, this is going to be my foreground. Uh, here I've got the same 1920 by 1080, but uh, I'm going to set the duration to be 21 uh, seconds long with an addition of 21 frames at the end. Uh, so almost 22 frames long. And I'll say OK. Now I'm also going to take my background composition and make its composition settings pretty much the same length, uh, 21, 21. And just make sure that all of my layers here are just extended out to match the full duration of that composition. 
Now in my new foreground composition, I can actually nest my previous background composition by dragging my background only into my foreground. I've now got that kind of all merged down into one single layer and I've got this background in place. Let's put my character on. So to do this, I'm going to take my foreground master and just drop it right on top. Now the character here has an alpha channel cutting it out, which is the reason why he sits in place pretty nicely. Now the color toning is off a bit, uh, just because I haven't uh, changed my color uh, the same way I changed my master color. So why don't I select the same exposure and color balance filters that I used on my master layer back in the background only. I'll copy that, or edit copy. Go to my foreground, select my new foreground master for my character, and paste these uh, changes in. And I can always uh, change it a bit further one way or the other till I have it the way I like it. And I can edit like maybe his red element a bit more, maybe just get him a bit more closer by eye. But uh, you know that sort of integrates him a lot better into the composition than if I have these filters off. So I'm just making this match up. And you'll now notice that if I kind of like scrub through here all of this is uh, coming together. Well, he's currently not casting any shadows, so I've got my shadow cast layer. I'm going to drop that in. I'm going to put my shadows underneath my master, so he's got his cast shadow here. And you can see how that shadow is positioned underneath him. This is a mostly white image, so on that shadow layer, I'm going to right click, go to blending mode, and uh, I am going to choose multiply. And you'll notice that now I've got my shadow being cast by the character. The shadow's a little too dark. So um, it's just like shadow within the shadow here. So I'm going to go to my foreground shadows uh, opacity by opening up the uh, layer, clicking on those little triangles. And uh, I'm just going to tone the opacity down till it's a lot more subtle since he's pretty much in shadow the whole time, we only want a little bit of that effect. Also behind my character, I'm going to load in my reflections layer. If I hide my character, you can see this a bit better. Here's my reflections sort of adding on top there. Uh, I'm again going to set my blend mode to additive, which is going to be, again, really subtle. It's this just little character arm here in the window. If I turn this on and off, you can see his reflection right there as he's walking past. This is pretty much the only element I really have of that reflection in this shot. But, uh, you know, again, useful for that um, believability. Here's my character in front. Uh, I've got my direct illumination pass. And, uh, you know, here it is on top. The uh, direct illumination pass is uh, not cut out properly in this case. Uh, what I want to do is I want to get rid of the black background. And uh, of course, if I have a black background, I could always say blending mode add, and that will get rid of it. But that actually adds illumination onto the character, which is not what I want. I actually want to use this blending mode as a multiply, so I get these like darker shadows. Uh, actually applying to the character, giving him some more direct illumination. But this causes my background to be cut out a bit weird. So the question is, what do I do here? Well, my master layer has a really good alpha. That's obviously cutting things out. I can use the same alpha channel that I have in my master layer, cutting him out, to cut out my foreground director radiance. I can do this by going in my foreground director radiance layer to affect channel and I can choose set mat. Now here I can take my mat from my master layers alpha channel and you'll notice this is now going to mat out this layer based on the alpha channel of the already existing master. So again I, uh, I have my foreground direct layer I went to effect channel and I chose set mat and this allows me to choose which layer I want to pull the alpha from and I can choose whether I want alpha or luminance or any of the other channels. 
Now this direct effect is way too intense, so I'm going to dial it back off the opacity and just sort of like ease it on a little bit. I've got an opacity of only about 60% here, and that does pretty much what I need it to. You know, finally, the last layer that I've got to apply on is my occlusion layer, and I'm going to add that on top. This is a mostly white image, so I'm going to right-click, choose the blending mode, multiply, and you'll see I'll now have my deep shadows in the shot. Here's the with and without occlusion. Again, if your occlusion is a little bit too dark, you can always sort of edit it and uh, change your opacity till you have it exactly the way that you want it. So, you know, this has been a look at setting up some of these basic layers uh, in After Effects here. Uh, what we're going to do in the next video is talk a little bit about uh, using uh, masks in our layers, and also we'll get into some color grading. Uh, so this has been video 14. Uh, please stay tuned for the next video, video 15, on color grading and using masks.